Well, hello and welcome to episode seven of If That Makes Sense, the Family Life original podcast for young folks, 20-somethings. Today, we're in an interesting circumstance. Say hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yes, this is that fun time of life where the world is kind of separated into digital compartments for the time being. We're all on quarantine or the more PC way of saying it is sheltering in place. That's not scary like quarantine. Hi, I'm Tim. I work in the radio production department at Family Life. Hi, I'm Trinity and I work in the events department. I'm Mary, and I work with Tim in the radio production department. And I'm Lindsay, and I'm in public relations. Yay, Lindsay and Trinity, our new friends here today. <laughs> Welcome. Glad to have you all here. <laughs> you can hear uh, that Trinity and I are in the same space. Uh, Trinity and I are married, and uh, she just started working recently at Family Life, so that's really cool. And uh, so today's kind of a mixture of, of digital togetherness and actual togetherness because this quarantine's got everybody in a different situation. So I'm just curious, what's it been like for everybody? Mary, can you share with us a little bit about just what's, what is your life right now? <laughs> well, my life is, it's something. Um, <laughs> I live in an apartment by myself and I have no pets, so... Yeah, but I mean, other than being by myself, it's pretty great I'm talking to my family almost every day and and talking to you guys too is really great. Um, and yeah, yeah, doing lots of things, uh, watching The Voice and, and, and <laughs> reading books and everything, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Doing that stuff you got to do to stay sane. Lindsay, what are, what are things like in your quarters? Well, uh, I have a little bit more going on, which is <laughs> nice most days. I actually have a seven month old baby, so he keeps me quite busy. Oh, but um, I, I got to say, it is a little bit strange feeling more cooped up than normal. I got to take a walk the other day and that felt so freeing. I was like, <laughs> yes, I am finally outside. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it makes you take things, realize what you've taken for granted, but how about you, Trinity? What's this like? <clears throat> it's been pretty interesting. I will say I love that I get to be with my puppy dog all the time now, <laughs> and I think he likes it too. He's, he's getting lots of attention right now. Um, That's not like an endearing nickname for me, by the way. We have an actual dog. <laughs> His name is Shasta, and he's an Australian Shepherd, and yeah, I think he likes it, and we're, we're doing all right, and we're, we're staying busy with everything we need to do for work, so it's been good. And just the way we're staying connected right now through technology kind of brings us to the place where I want to kind of springboard our talk off of today, and that is technology. Like, we're in the 21st century right now. We're talking over voice chat. The connection might be a little bit laggy here and there. But there's a lot of interesting stuff going on right now. What are you guys seeing happening in your digital worlds right now? You know, I've seen some really cool stuff um, going on, actually. You know, I feel like a lot of the times I'm like, ah, like everything's online. It's so frustrating. Um, but in a situation like this, I have a whole new appreciation for it. Um, you know, information is so readily available. You know, I get to see live updates on what's going on every day. Um, you know, I don't have to wait for a newspaper in the morning. <laughs> um, it's really nice to be able to live stream our church services. To me, that is incredible. Um, you know, churches that are typically more old fashioned and old school and technologically challenged, I like to say, <laughs> you can see the nun making big strides forward to be like, nope, we need to keep our congregation together. And um, the other thing that I've seen a lot of that I really appreciate is the community effort that I see on Facebook. I see a lot of groups being formed um, that are things like, hey, support your local businesses, like these people need your help, or individuals just saying, like, if you are an elderly person, please contact me, like, I will help you, I'll deliver groceries, like, if anybody needs diapers, contact me, I have this surplus. I mean, I just love seeing that kind of activity. It's very refreshing to me because I feel like normally that kind of community involvement isn't as uh, 
I don't know. It's it's not as prevalent. So to me, that's the positive that I've seen come out of this. So yeah, to me, that's really exciting. It yeah. is. It is because it's a time where it makes you realize that you're not. <clears throat> it makes you realize it's it's not just about what's going on in your world. It's 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 not just about the things you care about. The even even the political party you're a part of and things. Those kind of divisions, as I've, I've heard you mention that in the past when we've talked about this, that, that divisions that have up to this point been front and center issues are uh, in terms of politics and the election we've got coming up and all that stuff. People are kind of maybe looking more to togetherness than separateness, which is cool and kind of paradoxical because we're literally separate right now. We're all literally not together, <laughs> but we've got to kind of come together. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's really neat about this time because a lot of times you just hear so many negative things about technology and how like our kids are just uh, consumed by technology and how it's, it's this terrible thing. But I'm, I'm really appreciating um, seeing all the positives that are coming out of this time and, and remembering that it's springtime when, um, students are starting to see the end of the tunnel with, with school and the weather's getting better. So people are starting to do more things outside typically. And, and, um, it's, it's really nice to have this thing that we can use to communicate where we're usually in a time where we're, getting together more often and and so yeah, yeah yeah i'm really appreciating the technology yeah mm -hmm. you know and the other thing that i hadn't thought of about this is think about what technology is doing for employment right now mm -hmm. i mean so many of us are working from home if the internet wasn't an option for us i bet you unemployment would be so much higher mm -hmm. so you know i hadn't thought of that before but it's like you know, a hundred years ago or, or something, if we all needed to quarantine ourselves, but we didn't have internet, like we'd all yeah. just be out of a job. Mm -hmm. It's not as simple as, you know, just go and work from home. Like we're just so blessed to be able to have that as an option. So my family all lives in Ohio right now. And I know they're, they're not really together either. I have a bunch of siblings and they're kind of scattered around Ohio. So they're not spending a lot of time with each other right now, obviously. Um, but for me, it's just been really cool because I just always crave phone conversations and FaceTiming with my family when I can, just cause I, I only see them a few times a year. And so kind of as a result of everything that's been happening the last few weeks, we've had so much more communication. My family did like a big group chat the other night <laughs> and it was just hilarious and it was wonderful. And I think there's probably like 10 of us on there. So it was a little chaotic. All on one little yep, iPhone screen, little just iPhone like screen. all these little faces. <laughs> but yeah, I just really love that extra closeness I've had with my family at this time, despite the eight hour difference between us. It's been wonderful. And you and I were even talking about the way it kind of connected us with our, well, our current church, as we've all kind of mentioned already, but um, mm -hmm. even our past church too, mm -hmm. Trinity. Like, Yeah. Yeah. This past Sunday, we actually uh, reconnected with Grace Community Church in Ohio, which is the church my dad pastors at. And it was just so cool to log on to Facebook and just see all of my friends that I've known for 15 plus years also on just watching the same message together and listening to what, you know, my dad would have to say as well as some of the other pastors they did a round table talk. And I just was so encouraged by that. And I could see my siblings logged on to, he says like, Shreya is watching, mm -hmm. you know, Jonathan is watching. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know them. <laughs> I miss you. But yeah, that was, that was just like a really unique thing because we've never really watched a service live before. So yeah, it's different, but I really... I, I've loved it. I love that that connection that we've had with people who are far away with us or far away from us, you know, at this time has just been really wonderful. From everything from like church like that and to employment like you were just saying, Lindsay, and just personal relationships, it's it's been really I feel kind of guilty saying this, but it's been really cool to see what's happened. And to your point that you made a bit ago, Mary, yeah, technology gets a bad rap sometimes, but in a time like this, it really underscores 
It's it's not the technology that's the problem. Uh, it, it's the way we use it. There's some really beautiful things happening right now through technology, and I just think it's it's really cool to when you get to see better natures prevailing in a in a time like this through the stuff we have. Like our IT guy at work was saying, just. If this happened 15, 10 to 15 years ago, it would have been so much more of a nightmare than it is today. It's it's really cool to see. So moving on a little bit here, there's we're all inside, we're all on our technology, but we're, for the most part, slowing down and staying in. And I think all of our lives, we, we talk about the busyness, the fast pace. All of us in different ways are slowing down and changing our routines right now. What are some things you're learning, some things you want to learn, some things you want to see us as a community of Americans and people on this planet together learn? What are some things you want to see learned and you think can be learned in this time when we're all kind of slowing down some more? You know, something that I think that is really special that I hope will come from this is I think that everyone you know, kind of being locked up in their homes a little bit and uh, being kind of uh, quarantined from everybody that we know. Um, you know, I think that when we do get to come out of this and go back to our daily lives, I think we're going to be so much more appreciative for everything that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, being in America, I mean, we are just so blessed on so many different levels being, you know, really a first world country. We have anything that we want, you know, within a couple miles, we can hop in our car, go buy whatever gadget gizmo things that we don't need, but are just for fun. Um, we have paychecks that, you know, come in every week. I mean, these are all just things that we completely take advantage of. And, um, you know, I think that Americans, we, we can be very wasteful and we can be very focused on the wrong things a lot of times uh we're very materialistic and all of that and um you know even down to like those of us who are unemployed you know like losing that security and that paycheck you know i know there's a lot of people right now in the service industry that have lost their jobs they genuinely aren't sure how they're going to pay their bills next week and it kind of brings everybody back to their roots it kind of brings every back everybody back down to this level of like you know kind of just the essentials you know what do i really need what do i really value what is really important to me right now and um, you know, we really are going through a crisis and I, I hope that this is something that, you know, when we do walk out of it, it's like, I hope that we all just have this whole new appreciation for everything that's in our lives. Well, I'm going to add a few thoughts there. And I shared this with you guys a couple of days ago, um, when we were talking about what does slowing down look right, look like right now. And I, I kind of explain, like, I feel like I've been through two different phases. And and last week is where we really started to see things progress in our country. And that was when we were all sent home and told to work from home. And so really that first week, I was just like so crippled by fear. And I was absolutely glued to my phone and basically reading every single headline. I would hop on like every five minutes and see, okay, okay what's happening? What's, what's going on? Um, and then I would log into Facebook and Instagram because I wanted to know what was going on with my friends. And I'm not really much of a social media person. And I've tried to kind of step away from that over the last several months. But, you know, I was so scared of missing out on what was going on in their lives. And so I was just glued to my phone. And by the end of the week, I got the notification about how much time I'd spent on my phone looking at, you know, this and that. And I was so ashamed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I've had so much time this week. And I've used that time basically being on my phone. And all that really did for me was instill fear and anxiety. And I was just feeling super convicted about that. And I'm like, I was talking to Tim about it, but just also to myself. I'm just like, I... I don't want to look back on this time where we had all this extra time because we were forced to be at home all the time and, and look back at it and feel full of regret for not using that time mm. well. And last mm-hmm. time or last week, I did not use that time well. And so this week I've tried to take a different approach where instead of looking at the headlines every few minutes, I'm just trying to invest in 
more creative endeavors and, and my hobbies. And so I've been painting more and I've been playing piano more. Um, and of course, part of that is also just communicating with my family more um, on FaceTime. But that's just been a really wonderful blessing for me that's kind of helped me slow down and know that I'm using my time well. And um, it's just been a much different week for me. And that anxiety, yeah, it's it's still there for sure, but it's not as loud mm -hmm. as it was last week. And it just makes a big difference when you can just kind of put your phone away, you know? So that's been something yeah. that's been important to me this week. And I hope, I don't know how long we're going to be in this situation, but mm -hmm. I hope to kind of carry that with me the next few weeks. And yeah. There's things we're, we're learning right now. Like what you said, Lindsay, we're appreciating what we have. Like you said, Trinity, we, we want to be careful of what goes into our mind and, and then how we use the time that we have with our thoughts and with our actions. It's, it really puts a big burden on us, doesn't it, though, for afterwards not forgetting all this stuff that we're saying we're learning. Like, we have such a bad track record as humans of, of learning a thing, of being in a season and saying, oh, God, thank you for showing me this and thank you for teaching me this. And then when the circumstances change, we so often go back to normal. Like, if we come back and listen to our own episode here, we've got to, like, <laughs> use this as an opportunity to be like, oh, are we being accountable to that? Are we remembering those things? Mm -hmm. What about you, Mary? I've heard you talk about some, some things you've got time for now. Yeah, so I think it's funny that before all of this chaos that's been happening and everything, everyone was so busy all the time. And I was always hearing, oh, I'm just so busy or I'm so tired and I don't have time to do all the things that I want to do. And it's really kind of cool in a weird sort of way to, to have this time now where we can do a lot of things that we wouldn't have time to do before. And of course, we can't do things with other people as much. Um, but we can do things like read a book, clean your house, finish whatever project you're working on, or um, just taking time to pray and read your Bible. Yeah. And we actually have time to do that. And um, there's, I have like a whole giant list here. Of, I've just like spent like two minutes writing down a bunch of things that we could do, like learning a language, calling a friend, starting a prayer journal. Like there's so many things that we could use this time for. And it's, I found for me that it's kind of easy to say that <laughs> and then go do something that's not productive at all. And at least for me, that's something that I have to be working on and just like, okay, if I'm bored, instead of going and watching a TV show, I should go read the Bible or something. And, and yeah, that's just something that I've, I've been thinking about recently. So. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's a real thing. Having thoughts that we know would be best for the time and then actually like putting them into practice. Um, <laughs> yeah, especially with what I want to kind of, lean us into next here in our conversation, I've been feeling a lot of that. And that is the idea of the hope we have as Christians specifically. Mm -hmm. So that's one of those areas where it's easy to know the right thing. And then it's sometimes harder to practice it. That's my own struggle. But I think that the whole reason we can say all these positive things we've said about what we want to learn through this and what we can do through this and what cool things we're seeing happen through this, I think a lot of the basis for those optimistic outlooks is that we ultimately have a hope that's deeper than this world. We have a hope that's based in Christ, a hope that's based in what he's purchased for us, what he's done for us. So what I want to kind of throw out there to each of us is what does your Christian hope mean for you right now? And what is it, what can it mean for the world right now? And you can take either of those sides of that question. I would say that my faith in Jesus and the hope I have in him, it just gives me this inexplainable peace. And I was so encouraged by a message I listened to with with Tim a few weeks ago. Um, his brother-in-law, who is also a pastor in Ohio, or actually, I'm sorry, my brother-in-law, um, 
he preached on John 14, 27, which I'm sure a lot of people have been referring to that verse these last few weeks. But it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That's Jesus talking there. Yeah, of course. (laughs) Anyways, and so Christopher, as he was sharing this message, he was saying, the world gives us peace by giving us a sense of control. And so some of those things would be, you know, having insurance, um, having plenty of money in your bank account, knowing the statistics, or in some people's cases, having lots of toilet paper. Um, (laughs) um, But, you know, when those things disappear, we lose control of those things. Um, When our circumstances change, we we lose that control, the control that the world gives us. Um, and, And what he was saying that just really stuck with me was true peace doesn't come from feeling in control, but it's by knowing that God is in control. Mm. Um, and I have a tendency to, I just, I want to control so much about my life. I think we all do. And it's so easy just to rest on the fact of, oh, I've, I still have this job. You know, I, I have money in my bank account and I'm okay. I'm okay. And instead of looking to Christ, Mm, I'm yeah. looking at my circumstances, and that's not what God has for us. That's not what He wants for us. He wants us to be looking to Him for that peace. Um, yeah. And so I was challenged by that message, but just so encouraged. And again, even as I say that now, I know that I'm just so incredibly blessed because yes, I I am still employed and I'm able to work from home, and we have we have food in our fridge and we have cars that work. And and right now. There's so many people who who don't have that and and they don't know Christ and they don't they don't have that hope and that joy and that peace that we as Christians have. And so for them to be going through this time is just it looks totally different. And so I just say that so carefully because I also, you know, if I were to lose my job, would I still be able to say, Mm. um, I trust you, God. Because it's it's a totally different thing, you know, when that happens. And so yeah, I'm just praying and trying to remind myself that you know, even even if I feel comfortable right now, anything could change at any moment. And I just need to remember that God is present and he is there through all of it. And he loves me and he sees me. So I, I don't have to be afraid. And no matter what happens. I never get tired of hearing that because I always need that reminder. That's so good. I'm always tempted to go the other way, the hope and the peace and the things that don't really bring that help and peace. That's good. You know, and on the flip side of that, it's, you know, especially for those who aren't Christians or maybe just aren't very strong in their faith, um, you know, in scary times like we are right now, I I feel like fear really pushes people to God hmm. um, in a lot of circumstances. I don't, you know, I, I mean, it makes sense, you know, because people are looking for that peace and that comfort and they're going to be more open to things when they're scared, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, again, we're in this kind of terrible situation, but my hope is that this will be kind of God's mysterious way of working and hopefully, you know, bringing people closer to him. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, that's that's what I hope anyway. So. Uh, this is totally random. wasn't planning on sharing this, but a friend I was on the phone with last night said about the current situation, which we haven't even named it yet. We're talking about coronavirus in case you oh, yeah. uh, missed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you never know. Maybe in the future, whatever. <laughs> so I was talking with a friend and he said, Jesus made, he, he, he made a blind man see with mud. So he spat in the dirt and he made mud out of it and he put it on the blind man's eyes and he brought him clarity. So Jesus brought clarity to a blind man with mud. And then he said he really believes that Jesus will bring clarity to our world through this virus. Like he can use a dirty, earthy thing Mm -hmm. to bring clarity. And I thought, whoa, that is super deep because it's perspective. It's, Mm -hmm. It's real. That's what it does. That's what these kind of situations do for you is they make you Christian and, 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 and unbeliever alike. They make you take, take account of what really matters in life. So I just had to share that. I heard I that last that. night and I thought, oh, that's good. That's good stuff. That's a very good point. 
One of the things I was thinking about is that we're we're so surrounded by fear that everyone's afraid of this virus and um, it's really easy to let that overcome us as Christians but as Christians we're we're called to be light in the darkness and especially with the way that the world is right now so full of fear we can shine even brighter because we have this peace I mean Jesus is called the Prince of Peace and he's also called our brother Mm -hmm. and like that's so cool the Prince of Peace is my brother Mm. and um, just thinking about that gives me uh, hope and makes me happy (laughs) (laughs) but a verse that that keeps um, going through my head is that God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind and and I think um, that's something to keep in mind when we're looking at the headlines and and um, listening to the news and talking to friends who don't have the hope that we have and I was just talking with one of my friends the other day and she's scared because it's it really it's a scary thing that's happening and especially with the way that the media magnifies everything it, it's important to remember that there are a lot of people who are not doing great yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, we we need to be compassionate and and um, to say hey I get it it's scary but I'm not scared because Jesus <laughs> yeah really and I think that's important to keep in mind when we're talking with our friends and such yeah I was just gonna comment on, on that that what you just said right there Mary that it really is a scary time and and that's good because this is kind of what I was getting at a little bit earlier when I said what I struggle with is is really holding on to that Christian hope in the right way. What I mean by that is I really I'm okay right now, personally speaking. Like I'm I'm doing okay, you know. Um yeah. my situation I'm I'm very blessed to use the overused but still applicable Christian word. Mm-hmm. I'm super blessed right now. I really am. But will I still have that hope if I am not what the world would call blessed? You know, will I still have that hope if a beloved family member who has a, a worse off immune system than mine gets this? Will I be okay if I am laid off? Will I be okay if if the the stores go co- totally, you know, shelves empty? You know, all that kind of stuff. Where is my hope really? Mm-hmm. And so, kind of the the caution I've been thinking to myself, and I think would be would be good to share here for others who are feeling like me right now is. When I say, don't worry, God's got this, that's a true statement to say, don't worry, God's got this. That is true for a believer. But Mm -hmm. do I mean, don't worry, God's got this because I'm doing fine right now. I've got a job. I've got my health. I'm young. Don't worry. God has totally got this. Or do I mean, don't worry, God has got this no matter what happens. And I think a lot of times it's tempting for me to use it and think about it in that first sense. Like, oh, God's got this, I'm doing fine. Or when I say, just, yeah, that, don't worry. When I say, don't worry about it. It's our Christian, you know, we're not, we're commanded not to worry as Christians. That's true. But when I say, don't worry, do I really say, am I really meaning to myself, hey, don't get concerned about this kind of thing. You don't need this kind of negativity in your life. You're all right. Well, no, don't worry doesn't mean don't be concerned. This is a real issue, and it's it's costing a lot of people a lot. It's it's costing the world a lot right now. It's it's wrong to not be concerned about what's going on. And as you mentioned, Mary, it's our responsibility to be compassionate as Christians. So mm-hmm. it's, it's important to remember when I say, don't worry, God's got this to myself, I've got to remind myself, Yes, but I've got to consider that statement outside of just the controlled context of my own life and realize, yes, we all are okay because God has us all in his perfect plan no matter what comes. And it's my responsibility as a Christian right now to not just be thinking about me and how I'm doing. So that's that's something I've been... I, I need to keep challenging myself with, like mm-hmm. continually challenging myself mm-hmm. with. Something my dad has said many times to me and my siblings over the years 
Uh, I think it's something he heard in college. And he reminded us again this past Sunday. He says, don't doubt in the dark what God has done for you in the light. Mm. And I think Mm -hmm. it's so easy for all of us right now to be doubting God when we're so afraid. And God is always good. And he's present. Um, So I think that's just a wonderful reminder. Um, even when times are hard and, and we're in this really sc- really scary situation, don't don't doubt him. Mm. And doubt is probably one of the biggest struggles for me personally is just doubting the character of God, but especially when times are hard. And so that's also just been a wonderful reminder for me this week, and I hope that also encourages you guys. Yeah. And that verse you shared, John fourteen twenty seven, where Jesus says, I'm going to read it again because it's so good. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. He says that like hours before going to the cross. He's able to say that, and that's true, hours before going to the cross. And as I was thinking about that, it's so important because it's those words are only true for his followers because he did go to the cross. So I just, man, that reminder right now, whether it's a a cross, you're facing a personal one uh, for Jesus. It was the literal cross bearing the sin and shame and, and punishment of all of humanity. But he was able to look at that and look at his followers and know what was coming up and say, I'm leaving you peace. I'm about to overcome the world. I'm going to give you a peace that is unlike anything the world can supply you. And that's ours right now. That's the piece we get to have right now. If you liked what you heard today here on this podcast, if that makes sense, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, any of those places you find podcasts. If you're old school, you can also go fln.org slash podcast and get started on the old computer there and find us that way. Also, though, I want to let you know about some other really cool Family Life original podcasts. Therese Talk, that's Therese Main. Our, you know her from the, the morning show if you listen to the Family Life broadcast. She shares a lot of really cool tips and recipes and has interviews. It's a really cool podcast. Also, 10 Minutes With, that's another Family Life original podcast, which if you couldn't guess by the title is only 10 minutes long. So it's a little shorter than this conversation we've had here. But they're really cool because they're conversations with artists and uh, authors, other Christian names that you're going to be familiar with and hearing some Family Life people talk with them. So you can find all of those by searching those names 10 Minutes With or Therese Talk wherever you get your podcasts or just go to fln.org slash podcasts. We also want to know what you want to hear us talk about here on If That Makes Sense. So let us know at mail at fln.org. And I also want to say this podcast is possible because we're part of the nonprofit ministry, Family Life, Family Life Ministries. We would be so appreciative if if your appreciation of this podcast leads you to, to make a gift. That is awesome. And that's how things like this are able to be done. So that's fln.org slash give if you're interested. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to talking with you in the next one.